So we want to find the amplitude and the period of each one of these functions, and then we want to go ahead and graph it. Well, remember, amplitude is looking at the number that's in front of sign. There's no number written here, so that means there's a 1 in front, so our amplitude is 1. So that means you're going to go 1 unit above and 1 unit below the horizontal axis that cuts your graph in half. Now, the number in front of your variable of your angle is B. And remember, that number affects your period. And your period always ends up being 2 pi divided by that number. So it's 2 pi divided by 1 third, which instead of dividing by a third, you multiply by 3 and you get 6 pi. So to graph something like this, you're going to start off with your basic, in this case, sine graph. Remember, sine starts at the origin and goes up. So we start off with that. Once you have that graph, then you go ahead and put your tick marks on. We know our period is 6. We have to go all the way over to here before we get to one complete period. So we're going to mark this as 6 pi, while halfway in between then is 3 pi. If we wanted, we could mark this right here, and that would be 3 pi over 2, because it's halfway in between that. Then we're going to come along and mark how far up and down we're going. We're going up 1, and of course we're going then down 1. So, by putting on our tick marks after we do our basic trig function, or our, yeah, basic trig function, we've accomplished the correct version of our graph. Most people find it a lot easier to go ahead and graph the trig function and then put the tick marks on versus the other way around. So, looking over here at this one, remember the number in front tells you your amplitude. If it was a negative, it'd flip your graph upside down, but amplitude would still be positive. So in this case, we're going one-third up and down. The number in front of your variable of your angle is 1, so your period's not being changed, so it's still 2 pi. So then you're going to go ahead and graph your basic sine function. Then you're going to go ahead and put in your tick marks. We have to go all the way over to here for one complete period, so we're going to then mark that as 2 pi. Halfway in between, we're going to mark as pi. If we wanted, we could mark this as pi over 2. This would then be 3 pi over 2. If you wanted, you could go ahead and mark this one over here as pi. Now we're going to go up our amplitude of 1 third. So we're going to mark that as 1 third. We're going to go down the opposite of our amplitude and mark that as negative 1 third. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at cosine. Cosine is going to operate the same way. We're going to have our amplitude and period being affected here. Our amplitude on cosines, just like it is on sine. And it's the absolute value of the number in front, so our amplitude's 2. So our graph will be going up 2 and down 2. And the number in front of theta still affects your period. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, or 2 pi times 4, the reciprocal, or 8 pi. So we're going to draw your basic cosine graph. Remember, cosine always starts one up, so we're going to draw that basic graph. This is one complete period right here, so i got to mark that as 8 pi. Halfway in between the two tops here is halfway in between is 4 pi, so this is 4 pi. And then where it crosses is halfway in between the 0 and 4 pi, or 2 pi, and then similarly over here. How far up we go? Well, that's your amplitude. So we'll put our tick mark up here as 2. Put our tick mark down here as negative 2. That's it. Similarly, over here for cosine of 3, cosine 2 theta. Amplitude's the number in front. Period's going to be 2 pi divided by 2, or pi. You draw your basic trig function. Okay. Can't exactly remember where I was. I had to pause it and take a phone call. Okay, well, we have this information, and now we have to go one full complete period, which is pi, so we'll put that pi mark right there after we, so remember, you start off by drawing your basic trig function, and in this case, it's cosine, you start off at the top, go down, come back up, that's one complete period, halfway in between, which would be right here, would be pi over 3, or not pi over 3, pi over 2, wow, can I talk, whew. So, we'll take a look at this. This is 3. This tells you how far to up and down to go. So, you mark this as 3, and then you mark this one here as negative 3. Now, I already had the horizontal lines in there. If you didn't have the horizontal lines, you'd still mark the top as 3. You'd still mark the bottom as negative 3. It wouldn't make a difference.